Hi guys, welcome back to Tech Talks with Rachel. I'm here in Houston, Texas, and I'm talking to different tech professionals. Um, I'm joined by Mecca. He, uh, he has got like years of experience in tech, guys, and I'm really excited to bring you his knowledge and what he's doing out here and just have a quick conversation with you. Um, could we have your name and your position, please? Sure. My name is Mecca Egwekwe. I am executive director and co-founder of Code Crew. We're a nonprofit based in Memphis that teaches AI and computer science to kids and adults trying to get algorithms on their menus before they're on the menus of the algorithms. Wow. Wow, guys. Did you hear that? This is crazy. So I'm super impressed. I've just come back from a panel that Maker was in and we got loads of different nuggets from that chat. And one thing that um, I had a chat with him after as well, one thing that I found out that was really amazing was that he's got an academy that he's upskilling adults and kids to get into tech. Why is that important to you? So, so um, like I said, we're trying to get uh, algorithms on their menus before they're, they're on the menus of the algorithms. It, this is a world where uh, technology is increasing uh, in our lives. It's not decreasing. You can ask any child about that and they'll get it 100% correct. And so how do we position ourselves, especially in the black community in America and really across the diaspora around the world, to be producers of technology and influencers of that technology, that, such that we're shaping that technology uh, and, and not uh, have technology be something that happens to us, right, or, or something that we, we just consumers of and don't find opportunities to, to actually benefit our greater communities in terms of our financial and economic well-being. And so, so, so that's, that's what we're all about. It's, it's like empowering, empowering, excuse me, uh, uh, black Americans first and uh, black people around the world ultimately uh, such that we are in the driver's seat of our own destinies. So you talked about in the panel where you've upskilled people who've not gone to university to study software development. How does that work and what kind of challenges have you had to overcome with people who are trying to maybe start a new career but they've done a boot camp with yourselves and they're really struggling to get a job? Like, How does that, how does that translate into the challenges and overcoming those? Yeah, so the students that we serve are 90% uh, black and or Latino uh, in, in the adult program that we serve, right? Uh, that we train them in 29 weeks to become uh, entry-level software professionals. And, uh, and, we, you know, and they come from backgrounds where they're disproportionately poor. 75% uh, of them don't have college degrees. The other 25% that do are have them in uh, things that are totally unre unrelated to tech. Um, it, it is, uh, uh, but each one of them comes with the recognition and the fire that uh, that tech is undergirding every industry today, and that they uh, have an opportunity to to be producers and make the kinds of incomes, uh, for, perhaps starting in careers, but also many of them are driven to be entrepreneurs in this space. So it is uh, the the kinds of challenges that they run and they come from, you know, are, are very real life challenges, right? I've I've got a student uh, while he was in our program. Uh, coming home from working his Amazon job on a, on a uh, one night on the weekend uh, to a shootout in the neighborhood, and he was grazed by one of the bullets, and and he uh, found himself in the back of a police car for another five hours being interrogated uh, by the police because they thought he had something to do with this, and and so uh, you know I've got uh, other students, uh, young ladies that have, have been trafficked, uh, but uh, you know I've got. Um, you know, just all kinds of real life problems that happen with students. Uh, but, but they uh, have um, bought into uh, what is the, the truth, which is that uh, being connected with these skills uh, um, and, uh, you know, showing up at class every day, like, like that young man who was grazed by the bullet showed up at class the next day. I'm like, man, what are you doing here, man? <laughs> let's, get, let's get you the kind of supports, uh, uh, therapy and mental health supports that you need, which we partner with others locally to do that sort of thing. But, uh, but each one of these students uh, believes in themselves. And, uh, and, and we make it clear to them that we believe in them. Uh, and, and as part of our process, getting them connected with, with employers in our employer network, uh, ideally with full-time positions immediately, but Oftentimes, it's internships that turn into full-time positions, but getting them those career pathways such that they can, uh, you know, first lift themselves from the ten or twelve thousand dollars a year income that they have into six-figure incomes, right? uh, but then also lift their families, their communities, let it be life-changing for them. Right? And so that's that's uh, that's what we do, and we equip them with. I, I can go into the technical details of the stacks that they learn and so forth, but we try we, we keep that game modern for them such that they are uh, marketable to employers. 
So how do you, you talked about it at the, uh, on the panel, how do you overcome the challenges of, let's say, they, they want a degree and they've got only a boot camp and they've only got experience that you've offered them? How, how do you go around that to make them more employable, give, them, give the employer faith in their abilities and, and um, how do they perform? So increasingly, employers are starting to recognize that uh, that uh, they're they're holding themselves back from having high quality talent by insisting on having a college degree to be a software engineer. Right uh, now, some some things do require uh, a college degree. But doing this kind of work doesn't necessarily re require that, and so uh, so we're we're doing a lot to change the narrative with employers to get them to recognize that they're missing out on talent opportunities. But then uh, those employers who are who already understand and get it are, uh, are bringing in great talent. And uh, after time, when these when these students have uh, worked in this space. Uh, and have experience. Uh, they're more and more attractive to employers and who probably care less and less about whether or not they have a college degree based on their experience of what they've demonstrated, what they can do. That being said, I still, we still encourage every student in our program to still take advantage of college uh, uh, where they can. In fact, we also partner with the local community college, so students who do our program can earn 15 to 18 hours of credit towards uh, an associate's degree in the community college as a step to them going forward to a, a four-year degree as well. Uh, and we, we want them to have that because we don't want them later on in life to run into potential ceilings also, right? Uh, and, uh, again, uh, mostly black and Latino, 40% of them are women. We want them to, to, to be equipped, but now they can have some money in their pocket while they're pursuing that college degree because our finances have historically been a barrier also for college for too many African Americans. So I personally have a journalism degree and I don't have a tech um, degree at all and I did a boot camp to get into software testing. Well if I wanted to come over from the UK and work here in the, in the, in the US market, would they turn around and be like, uh, a journalism degree and put me in the bin? <laughs> like what would, what would the process be here? Yeah, so, um, so I still absolutely encourage anyone with the aptitude and the means to go to college to do that. It's still the, uh, the more accepted and, and more surefire pathway uh, to, to careers in this space. Right? So someone like yourself coming from the UK to the US uh, with a journalism background, um, you know, it is, uh, maybe it's college, maybe it's a, a, a boot camp with certifications. Uh, certainly it's in the end, whether you have college or the boot camp or, and, or the certifications, uh, part of it is not just about what you know, it's, it's who you know, right? So it's about being active and plugged in and engaged, being showing up at, uh, we tell our students all the time, show up at these events that are hackathons and, and uh, someone speaking about different topics and introduce yourself. Uh, if you're an introvert like me, turn on the extra version for a minute, you know, right? and I know you gotta go back at home and recharge your battery, yeah. right? Uh, I, I can relate to that, but, but uh, it can be done because I've seen it done. One of my co-founders herself uh, doesn't have a college degree, came from a very challenged background in South Memphis where she grew up, and, uh, and before we knew it, she was uh, the uh, innovation manager for our entire county. Uh, in tech, wow. and so so it's it, it's possible, and I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like you like you're hitting the lottery or anything like that. I I uh, it it does take hard work. It takes stepping out, um, and uh, but and we need to make sure we do our part to establish the uh, education and other systems. Uh, such that we have comprehensive pathways uh, because it's not a one-size-fit-all for, for everyone uh, that can be, be contributors to the space. In terms of um, translating the UK um, skills and um, abilities, because generally if you use JavaScript, we use JavaScript. If, you, you know, if you're developing in React, so we're doing that too. So how easy is, is it for us to come over and join your um, tech market here? Um, so, so you hit it right on the head. The skills are the same. Right. In fact, uh, lots of companies are, are are employing people in Eastern Europe and India and different places around the world in terms of these skills. Right. And so, uh, the 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 tech skills alone aren't sufficient, though. Right. It is. Uh, how do you solve problems, right? How do you approach problems? How, are, are you, do you, can you show us that you can think computationally, but can you also show us that you understand the big picture of solving real problems, right? And so sometimes 
Uh, sometimes there may be cultural differences in that regard. Uh, that's probably less so between the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, than, say, between the U.S. and, say, India, right? Uh, but, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, it, that, that, that people aspect, the, the essential skills of, uh, uh, of approaching problems to where you understand the big picture of what's being solved and not just checking the box of what the requirements document says, right? Uh, those kinds of things are, are important to, to learn and understand and be able to articulate and communicate those things are, are, are important, right? So, uh, but the JavaScript, the React, the C Sharp, the, uh, you know, all those things are, are just the same uh, regardless of where they are, and, which is great, right? Because that means you can, you can learn this anywhere in the world. Uh, if you just apply and think of the big picture of the people skills that you need as well. My final question, or two questions left. What do you feel about the concept of every business is now a tech business? Is that true? Or is that why um, maybe you're upskilling people to get into tech? Because not every child might want to get into development. Why, I guess, how do you feel about that concept? Well, so first of all, we, we believe that any 21st century education uh, requires uh, computational thinking, right? That, so, which is why we worked hard in our state of Tennessee to make computer science a high school graduation requirement, uh, which we've successfully uh, accomplished, right? And so, and we're proud of, right? Uh, so, just any 21st century modern education requires that. Just like I learned about photosynthesis in school, but I'm not a biologist, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I understand that agriculture undergirds civilization. Of course, we need to know how those things work, right? And so, uh, and so, so that's ground uh, number one, right? But, um, but to, to, to your question again, uh, um, uh, is every company a tech company? Uh, in a sense, yes, right? Every tech company is a tech company. Well, I'll put it this way. Tech undergirds every industry. As I said on the stage a moment ago, right? You can't even write a song today without tech. Every song you listen to on the radio, um, you know, the, the radio itself, <laughs> right? Um, uh, you know, television has been it's, it's evolved. So you talk about journalism. Uh, who does journalism without tech today, right? And in fact, journalism itself is being heavily impacted by tech. Uh, half the sports articles that are written today are written by AI. Right? <laughs> and so, so, uh, and it's, it's so, so, it is. Uh, every industry is being impacted by it, and so, um, and so, so in a sense, every company is a tech company, or every, uh, or certainly every company is dependent on tech. And so there, and so being able to use tech effectively, being literate, uh, not just digitally, digitally literate, but AI literate, uh, is huge uh, for your productivity and your value to any uh, to any employer in any industry, right? Uh, as uh, we as individuals, and that's why we just we have to make sure that uh, we stay competitive by. Uh, and that's internationally competitive by ensuring that every child in every school in every grade has access to high quality AI and computer science education. Uh, and that every young adult that, that uh, wants to uh, pursue a, a career in the space has a, a, a pathway to do so that's not limited to just one option. So, so uh, that's the gospel I preach, like I say. <laughs> I love that answer. That is amazing. So, the final question I have for you is, what is the best career advice you've ever received, ever? And what would you like to pass on to our viewers? The best career advice I've ever received? Um, wow, that, that's a tough question. It is a tough question. <laughs> I'll give you a second. <laughs> you know, oddly, the best career advice I ever received I received from my mother as a child. Uh, when I knew that I wanted to go into computing, and, uh, I said, oh, I just need to do math and science, all that English and so forth, and that French class that I have to take, you know, forget all of that stuff. And I, I rapidly turned into a pretty lousy student in those classes, and I regret that. Uh, because the, the foundation, the communications foundations that those other subjects brought to the table, um, I, at this age, I'm still having to go back and relearn and reinforce and get stronger at, right? Uh, and I will say I appreciate uh, my educational upbringing that insisted that I do some of those things, even against my own 
a will, if you will. Um, uh, I was blessed to, 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 to go to Phillips Academy Andover, blessed to go to Morehouse College, blessed to go to Duke, Duke University. And in all those uh, instances, uh, communication was foundationally important. I especially appreciate Morehouse in terms of what it did for me in terms of understanding that big picture that I was speaking of earlier. Uh, uh, but had I listened to my mother and been a better English student in particular, uh, I, uh, uh, so many lessons I would have uh, learned earlier instead of uh, having to now learn the hard way as a, as a founder and executive director of a nonprofit. Uh, the only other thing I'll say is that I, uh, a career advice is uh, take some business classes if you have an opportunity to do so. Uh, because because uh, I encourage people once, you know, there's going to come a point in your life when you're so solid and of an expert in your field uh, that there are op entrepreneurial opportunities for you to step into, uh, but you definitely need some business foundations if, you, if you're going to do that uh, well, you know, and you know, of course, the best, the most effective companies and startups are the ones that have two or three co-founders. So certainly pair yourself with someone who have talents that you don't have such that you can step into uh, opportunities. But, but the more you understand about business, uh, the more successful you're positioning yourself to be as an entrepreneur. So, uh, and business uh, itself, again, is rooted in communication. Right? So, uh, so uh, I, I will bow, bow down to the journalists. No. <laughs> Thank you. Who's well rooted and founded in that regard, uh, and so that's that's the best advice I've got as a as a kid uh, that I'm definitely appreciating now as a grown man. Thank you so much, Maker. That was amazing. Thank you guys for watching. I'm hoping that people got some nuggets out of that combo. I'll see you guys in the next um, stand up interview here at Houston.